osmosis. Osmosis is the flow of solvent from a less concentrated solution to a more concentrated solution. Um, this can happen in a number of, of situations. Um, I think of it as nature trying to make things the same. And so you have a concentrated solution and a dilute solution, and nature says, these are different, that's not good, let's make them the same. This can happen um, inside your body if you drink seawater or something very, very salty. We, think, we say that seawater is a thirsty solution. It's going to pull water. It wants more water. That's why we call it thirsty. So here we have a picture of inside your intestines. So here's your intestinal wall. Here's inside the intestines, um, which is uh, the, where the salt water is. And so the concentration of sodium chloride is higher here than it is in the tissue of your body outside the intestines. And this, the membranes in your tissue allow water to pass through, but do not allow sodium ions and chloride ions to just pass through freely. So the water molecules can move across this membrane, but the sodium and the chloride, for the most part, cannot. So the, the water molecules are going to go into the more concentrated solution, and that's what's known as osmosis. So drinking salt water will actually pull more liquid, more water out of your body and cause you to become more dehydrated than if you didn't drink anything at all. So here we have um, some U-shaped tubes. And at the bottom here is a membrane, much like the cell wall, that's permeable to water but not to solutes. So it's called semi-permeable because it allows some things through and others not. So here we have a salty solution, and here we have pure water. Now, what would you expect to happen when this just sits, sits around? Probably nothing, right? I mean, the levels of, of water are equal on each side, and, and that's what normally happens when there's no membrane in the middle. But what actually happens is the water level, the liquid level on this side goes up, and the liquid level on that side goes down, which is not what you are used to seeing. Things like that don't happen. What's going on? It's osmosis. And so this water is going through. It can go through both ways. But over here, there are solute particles that get in the way of it coming back, and so we have a net movement of water molecules to the higher concentration side. And that causes the level here to go up and the level there to go down. When we were talking about gases and measuring pressures, we learned that if there's a difference in columns, column height here, that's a difference in pressure. And that's what's called the osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is the pressure you would have to apply to this side to prevent the osmosis from happening. If there was pressure here, enough pressure, osmosis would not occur. But if these are equal in pressure, then osmosis will occur. It'll only occur to a certain point. You've probably heard of reverse osmosis water purification systems. Right? So reverse osmosis, instead of the pure water moving into the dirty water or the solution, you put a lot of pressure here and you force the water through the membrane, leaving all of the solute, the contaminants, behind. That's reverse osmosis. So the osmotic pressure is a colligative property. It only depends on how many solute particles there are, the concentration. doesn't depend on what kind there are. The greater the concentration, the greater the osmotic pressure. So living cells act as semi-permeable membranes. If you put a living cell into seawater, it loses water through osmosis and becomes dehydrated. 
So here's the application to healthcare. Red blood cells in your blood. So this is what red blood cells are supposed to look like. They kind of have a donut shape. And they're nice and round. There's a concentration of solutes inside the cells, the blood cells, and there's a concentration of solutes in the blood plasma, the liquid around the blood cells. When those are nicely balanced, then the blood cells are good. They're the right shape. This is called isotonic, iso meaning the same. So the solute concentration is the same or equal to the concentration of solutes inside the cell. What those solutes are doesn't matter. It's just the overall concentration. Hypotonic is low. So the surrounding fluid is lower in solute concentration. When the concentration out in the plasma is lower than in the cells, the water will move into the cells because it's going to go to the higher concentration. And that causes the red blood cells to swell up. If that continues, they will explode. They'll burst. That's not good. They can't function when they burst. If, this, if the red blood cells are in a solution that has higher concentrations than what is inside of them, that's called hypertonic, a higher concentration. That draws water out of the red blood cells and causes them to shrink up like this, and they get all pokey and shriveled looking. There's a word for that, and I want, I want to just make particular note of this. That process is called crenation. When the red blood cells shrivel up because they're in a solution that's too salty. So if you think about someone in the hospital and they're getting IV fluids, you're pumping something directly into the bloodstream. Does it matter what the concentration of ions is in that solution? Yeah, it matters a great deal. Because if it's too low, it's going to cause crenation of the red blood cells and of all the other cells that that comes into contact with. I'm sorry, if it's too low, it's going to cause um, the, the cells to swell. Got it backwards. You really have to stop and think about it. If the concentration is too high, it draws the water out and causes crenation. And so that's why any um, IV fluid has to be very carefully made so this is the correct concentration.